let's learn how to create wood textures in Illustrator in this super simple tutorial. So in the famous words of Neil Buchanan, here's some I did earlier. This is what we're going to be creating. And these textures are fully vectorized. So you can scale them, you can stretch them, you can change the colors, and we can make them in a matter of minutes. So let's get started. Come to File, New. Let's create a web document. And I'm going to create a width of 1200 and a height of 1600. Set my orientation to portrait. Now the size of the document doesn't matter. You can do whatever you like. But what I found is it's easier to apply the effects to a smaller sized artboard than if you were to say, do it on a large large artboard with 300 print PPI rather than screen PPI. So just bear that in mind. It's easier to apply the effects to a smaller artboard and then scale it up afterwards. Press create. Come down to fill and stroke and let's just turn off the stroke, keep the fill on and come to your rectangle tool and just click and drag out a rectangle on the canvas, release and apply any color to it. It doesn't matter what it is because we're going to change this color later. Collapse the swatches, select it with selection tool and with it selected, let's go to effect, sketch, graphic pen. In the graphic pen window, set your stroke direction to vertical and you can create a sparser or more intense effect by decreasing or increasing the light to dark balance. So this really depends on the type of effect that you want, but I'm gonna go for something a little lighter so that there's more space between the grooves in the wood. And I recommend keeping your stroke length longer rather than shorter, so then it's easier to stretch these wooden grooves. Once you're happy, click OK. With the rectangle selected, object, expand appearance, and then window, image trace. Click off the selection and reselect it with selection tool for the image trace to kick in. Now feel free to play around with these image trace options, but I found keeping the threshold as it is, bringing the paths down to low, bringing the corners down to low, and make sure you turn on preview, and then bringing the noise down gives you the best results. Make sure method is set to abutting and create fills, not strokes. And finally, turn on ignore color. Now in older versions of Illustrator, this will be ignore white. In the newer versions of Illustrator, this is ignore color and you can select the color. Now it should default to white, but if it doesn't, you can use the color picker, select white, and this will now remove the white from the image trace. So this is tracing as we go, but if you don't have the preview turned on, simply click trace. And with the trace selected, object, expand, expand object and fill and press OK. We can now collapse the image trace panel. Let's now stretch the effect, make sure it's selected with selection tool and using the transform options, let's fill the canvas and also stretch to the left and to the right and click off the canvas to deselect it. Next, select with selection tool and come over to my warp tool. Now I can add curvier lines to this effect in two ways. The first one is by simply clicking and dragging down, as you can see, and I can also click across to create very harsh oval curves. So feel free to play around with the warp tool. And remember, it's difficult to see what's going on because of all the anchor points. So at any time, selection tool and click off just to see the effects you're making. And if you're not happy with them, you can always Command or Control Z to undo and go back in with the warp tool again. Once happy with your effect, let's apply some color. So let's create a background. Let's grab the rectangle tool, click, and I'm going to make the background the same size as the canvas. So 1200 by 1600 pixels, click OK. And now I can either double click the fill here and select a color from the color picker accordingly, or I'm gonna to come to my sample AI file and I'm going to grab these pre-made colors I've used. So Command or Control C to copy this palette, come back in, Command or Control V to paste it in. I'm just going to scale this down and put it on the side. And then if I select, use the eyedropper tool, and I can click the different fill colors and choose a color that I'm happy with. So that's the background. Let's select it with selection tool, come to my align panel, align to artboard, and we'll center horizontally and vertically. Then right click, arrange, center back. So that's my wooden base color. And now if I use the selection tool, to select the pattern. I can then do the same thing then. I can either double click the fill and find a color in the color picker, press OK. Or as I did with the background, I can select it with selection tool, come to my eyedropper, and then I can choose a color from my palette here. 
and select it again, switch off to see the colors. One final thing, if I just command or control minus to zoom out to touch. Now, as you see at the bottom, I've got a slight gap here where the edge of the effect has ended. So if I want this to bleed over the edge of the canvas, what I can do, select the effect with selection tool. Let's hold shift and alt to keep this in place and just scale it up slightly so it goes over the edge of the canvas. And then I can put this effect in a bounding box. So grab my rectangle tool, click 1200 by 1600, which is the size of my canvas, press OK, select it with selection tool, use my align panel, align to artboard, center align horizontally and vertically, and then going to hold shift and select the texture behind it. And then with these two selected, object, clip in mask and make. And now that puts the texture inside a clipping mask that is within the edges of the canvas. So I could scale this up as large or as small as I wanted and keep it refined within the clipping mask. And if I want to make changes then to this effect, remember, I just come back to object, clipping mask and release and it comes out of the clipping mask. Once we're finally happy, so I'm just going to select the selection tool and backspace to delete. Let's save this. So I'm going to save this as an EPS file. So file, save as, save on computer. Select my save destination, set my format to EPS. So let's just call this wood texture, press save, highest version we can, keep it on 8-bit color, happy with these settings, and press OK. And there we go. If I go to my images folder, there's my wood EPS file, and I can open this with Illustrator, and the EPS is good to go. So if I come back into my original sample, as I said, the beauty of these now is these can be scaled to any size. They can be stretched, they can be warped, and you can also come to File, Document Color Mode, and you can switch to CMYK if you wanted to use these in a print format. So there you have it, super easy wood textures in Illustrator that you can make in a matter of minutes, and because they're vectorized, you can change them to any color, and you can scale them as large or small as you like. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I will see you for the next tutorial.